Howdy from the porch. I'm going to share with you an article on ARP. It's called Your Coronavirus, Your Coronavirus Teaching Moment. It's written by Jessica Migala, and the subtitle is In an Anxiety Laden Crisis, Overcoming Your Worries Can Provide a Path Forward. That's right. Take these moments to reflect, not just on a better America or a better city or a better town or a better way in the future for all, but think about yourself, what you need. One day in March, you woke up and your entire life had changed. Your work was disrupted, your loved ones, health suddenly in peril, your movements restricted, your home turned into a pressure cooker. But what if you could turn all this negativity and adversity into something positive to become a stronger and more resourceful person and to build a toward a healthier future that's what resilience is says uh from a wash called director of chicago family uh center of health and author of um, strengthening family resilience it's not simply coping with the situation but it's turning difficult times into a growth experience Situations like coronavirus epidemic, I mean pandemic, excuse me, pandemic can trigger the classic signs of anxiety, elevated heart rate and shortness of breath. But studies show that what and when you see a situation like this as a challenge, something you are able to rise and overcome. If you can see it as something you can rise and overcome, the heart becomes more efficient, blood vessels expand, and you're more effective and productive. When you see it as a threat, however, your blood vessels contract, the heart works less efficiently, and decision-making is impaired. That's what a lot of us have been experiencing, right? In the long term, viewing difficult episodes as unmanageable threats is associated with accelerated brain aging. Here are some common situations many older Americans face during this crisis as well as some ideas for turning threats into challenges and challenges into teaching moments, okay? And here are the subtitles. If you are at greater risk because of your ethnic group or health condition, are you? Let's think about it. The anxiety of knowing that you're more vulnerable to COVID-19 can make you feel like a walking time bomb. Uh, your age can make you feel that way right now. Being male and overweight can make you feel that way right now. Uh, you may then exist in a constant state of stress and worry, which ironically can make it harder for your body to fight off pathogens. I guess that's why exercise is great for you, huh? Don't forget, take control. That's the second point the author makes here. Take control. Um, there are two constructive ways to approach any challenge. Lombardo says uh, problem solving problem focused coping and emotion focused coping they are equally important i'll say it again problem focused coping and emotion focused coping these are two different strategies they are equally important problem focused involves following guidelines like social distancing uh, and isolation if you have been doing this stop for a moment and pat yourself on the back You've been doing the right thing. Okay. Um, emotion focused involves taking measures, act, measurable action to reduce your stress. Uh, meditation would help. Something you need to do to boost your immune system. Uh, if you do meditation for 20 minutes a day, you should really be able to reduce and control your stress. I used to do this a lot, and I think right now I need to get back to it. What about you? If you are under intense marital stress in China, for example, where COVID-19 first emerged, the government enforced social distancing with an iron fist. Now they're having the biggest uh, divorce rate in history since March. The country saw a record spike in their divorce applications. Even the best relationships are under physical, psychological, and economic pressures right now. Getting marital stress under control is crucial to your long-term health and sure will help you out right now. In 2017 study, researchers put couples in stressful situations, then took saliva samples. They found that couples who showed poor levels of dyadic coping, 
Static coping means the ability to appreciate each other's stress reactions had greater levels of interleukin-6, an indicator of inflammation in their saliva. Enhancing dyadic coping, that means improving it, in couples may impact not only their mental health, but also the risk of stress-related immune disorders, the researchers reported. If you're like me and you have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, you can be suffering too from immune disorders. Um, uh, I'm happy to see that a neighbor walk by with a mask on. It's respectful. Uh, take control. In a time like this, you need to take control. Uh, it helps to see differences between the two of you in a marriage as a strength and not a weakness, advises Irina Fierstein, an individual and couples therapist in New York City. Maybe you are more focused on every bit of COVID-19 news or every twitch of the stock market while your partners remain blissfully unaware. Embrace the difference. Dyadic coping in this case involves sharing goals and emotions. Actively listen to your partner's worries and being supportive, both physically and verbally. Yeah, it's true that we often don't want to even talk about our goals and emotions right now. Uh, it just seems to make matters worse. We need to find a way to do it in a peaceful way. Even if just one partner takes these actions, it says it will benefit both partners. Uh, if arguments escalate, consider professional counseling and mental health professionals are seeing patients virtually online during this crisis. If you are a caregiver for someone who's been separated from you, a caregiver from someone who's separated from you, uh, what do you do? That means if you have a loved one in a facility that you can no longer visit because of social distancing measures, it's normal to have conflicting and confusing feelings. On one hand, you know what's best to protect them, but not having access to someone to ensure that they're okay and that you're loving them, uh, that's, you know, you're experiencing super stress. Okay, leave your guilt behind and, uh, Fear and frustration. That's the most important thing to do right now, says uh, Director of Clinical Research C. Vale Wright. He says, take control. First, don't underestimate the power of a simple phone call. Research shows that even in one's final moments, the sense of hearing is the last to go, says Lauren Wolf Weber, a, uh, some sort of psychologist in Tampa, Florida. It says, Garrop Psychologist. Uh, while this does not take the place of being physically present, the sound of your voice may provide your loved one great comfort. Some facilities will arrange for residents to talk to you on the phone while they're standing near a window where they can see you outside. It sounds hokey, but you can stay close and still be physically distanced. Also, federal privacy laws have been eased now in allowing uh, facilities to take photos of mom or dad and send them to you electronically. Uh, this has been noted by several of the hospitals uh, and uh, care centers across the country. The next worry you might be having is, or not worry, a place to, to take charge. If you have, if you are homebound and missing visits from your regular care river, what should you do? Isolation can have negative psychological effects, Wright says. Connection is critical for everyone, in particular old they're adults. Why? Well, yeah, everybody needs connection. Assuming your physical needs are being met, you'll now want to think about your emotional health. Take control. The best way to overcome isolation is to become a caregiver for yourself as best you can. Then turn your attention to others. Check in regularly with old friends through phone conversations. I've called uh, several people I haven't talked to in years uh, as of late, and it does make me feel good. I suggest you do it too. If you can do a video chat, it would be better. Um, refocus your energies into concerns for others can help you turn away your anxiety and toward connection. Uh, I just called my mom and passed on some message from a, a family uh, where a woman uh, she knows, uh, has known for many years and loved uh, and died. And um, you can help others at this time. Uh, the group who brought meals to your door, maybe when you were sick or, or were unable to care for yourself, you can reach out to them and stay close in touch. 
community faith leaders can also be a powerful resource for inspiration and they can give you suggestions on how to serve others. Um, if you are a caregiver, spouse, or parent who is really struggling during this time, what do you do? If you're used to relying on a network of friends, relatives, and professionals to help you care for your vulnerable loved ones, you may now feel as if you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. In-home physical therapy appointments, bathing assistance, even just a reprieve so you can get some time out for a walk or go shopping, suddenly that help is gone and you're on the job 24 seven. How do you take control? It's easy to fall into worst case scenario thinking Wright says, uh, don't do it, it's negative. If you feel you're sinking in a negativity, try practicing controlled worry, she says. Set aside 30 minutes a day just for you to worry about things. Make a list during that time and then either start working on that list or put it aside for a while and try to work on your positivity. Do reach out with, uh, for, with others, for, uh, to others, as I mentioned before. Uh, write down your worries and fears. The simple practice has the power to help you contain your worries and free you to take action. Now think challenge. So you're facing a challenge, not uh, a catastrophe. Each day, review your schedule and all the tasks you need to accomplish. At the end of the day, congratulate yourself for what you've been able to meet and then prep for tomorrow's. You can find guides for caregivers and latest updates on safety recommendations uh, through the AARP. That's where this uh, article comes from. It's the pandemic issue. Uh, finally, if you, are, if you have peers, friends or family who are dying from the disease, what do you do? Whether it's a friend, a family member, or even a public figure who, who mattered to you who's passed away, those losses are, are particularly scary because it's natural to see yourself in this group too. But what makes this it, uh, situation especially difficult is that we're in a time when many funerals have been canceled or delayed indefinitely. That robs us of the time we need to mourn in order to gain closure and move on. So again, take control. Some funerals are taking place online and if you have the ability to watch the service on your computer, do so. Even if there's no formal ceremony, uh, Lombardo says, it's always important to reach out to loved ones to have the same conversation, sharing fond memories of the person who's passed, telling jokes that you'd actually have with them at a funeral. These things all allow you to process what's happened, honor their life and move on. As I noted earlier, a friend of mine's mother passed away and he won't be able to attend the funeral. Um, I'm gonna ask him again to uh, continue to reach out to loved ones, share fond memories of the, of the person as well as telling jokes. These things all allow you to process what's happened, honor their life and move on. I like these suggestions. This is all written by Jessica Migala. She writes for Health and other publications. Additional reporting in this article came from uh, Ray Miller. I've been sharing to you from the porch about articles related to uh, COVID-19 and sharing part of my story. I. Um, uh, at our house, we haven't even let my daughter leave the yard for eight weeks. Okay, she's been at house and she's been at home, so I'm a caregiver for her. And um, we need to begin to plan to go out. Uh, but at the same time, we find a lot of people cavalier out there about the COVID-19 virus. So we have to be balanced, we have to be positive. We also have to make a list of things and negotiate things with your spouse negotiate when when will it be okay to take a child out eventually under what conditions uh, to go out uh, in public and to meet others. Um, some of you have already made these decisions. Perhaps you can give us tips. Uh, tell me more. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda at uh, Kevin Stoda Channel and I encourage you to share what you know and think or are thinking about at this time. Also be positive and make your list if you are getting negative and just use that for a few times, minutes a day to worry about maybe a half hour uh, and then take the bull by the horns for the rest of the day. We love you. Take care.